Yes, uh, you're welcome. Uh, we're going to look at uh, to look at change uh, change management. Change management is an important uh, uh, aspect, especially in in healthcare. And uh, in this presentation, we are going to look at uh, the management skills that you you need to have in order to uh, manage change in any institution. What usually happens is that uh, 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 in a healthcare organization, uh, you have a lot of things happening. Uh, it could be that there are new forms that have been introduced, there are new medical forms that have been introduced. Uh, maybe there are new, uh, the, the, the management is introducing uh, electronic medical record systems. Uh, so these are some of the initiatives that can really happen in a healthcare organization. So um, you need to make sure that um, people can adopt these new changes uh, for the effectiveness and efficiency of uh, providing healthcare delivery services uh, to the clients. Uh, so. This is basically an illustration that uh, healthcare industry is actually very, very dynamic. Uh, a lot of things happen. Uh, a lot of changes happening within the industry. And this actually uh, contributes to the fact that uh, uh, healthcare managers need to, to, need to, to know how to transition or how to manage this uh, uh, how to manage these changes. So that is what we are going to look at. What models can you apply? What theories can you apply? Um, and and uh, what communication competences do you need? How do you manage resistance? So those are the key things that we are going to look at in this presentation. So in the healthcare industry, uh, there is evolution. There, is, there are changes every day. These changes happen because of political reasons, economic reasons, or technological reasons. There could be new um, uh, uh, newcomers to the market, uh, so you have new competitors. There could be emerging markets. Okay, there could be issues related to new regulations, new policies. All the things that I've just mentioned contribute to uh, changes, okay? And these are basically external. They, they are things that happen outside the healthcare industry, but have direct influence on the healthcare industry. And then we have the, those factors that actually uh, uh, propel growth, I mean, growth or changes within an organization. An organization, when an organization grows, uh, so you have an increase in the number of clients, clients that you serve. You have an increase in uh, in revenues. The expenditures also become become they, they become huge, and then uh, you have an increase in uh, in revenue. So when you have increase in revenue, increase in number of patients, uh, increase in uh, uh, in terms of financial expenditures, when you have all the things happening, it means that you need to adopt more efficient uh, mechanisms. So, for example, uh, if if previously you are processing the uh, receipts manually, you may need to automate the system. Okay, that it's in itself actually creates a change. Uh, you may also be interested in. Uh, uh, in aligning the organization towards its goals. So you, you, you have strategic objectives that you need to achieve. And to achieve those objectives, you need to make changes. Uh, so you also have uh, elements of having to, uh, to reorient the staff uh, to make sure that a uh, change is created to be able to achieve the strategic uh, objectives that you have. 
but you could also be interested in improving the quality of care that you provide within the, uh, the health facility. <clears throat> so for change to happen, uh, changes can be abrupt, uh, spontaneous, any uh, it, it, it changes can be those that you actually planned, or they can be unplanned changes, and they happen spontaneously, and then you need to adopt. Uh, but you also have what you what you can call uh, managed managed change. Okay, managed change is when now you look at uh, where you want to be and what are the things that you really need to, to do to reach where you want to be. So you create the changes in terms of structure, in terms of uh, systems or processes, uh, in terms of the staff and, and many others, okay? So with the planned change, you basically go through phases, uh, that is planning, uh, implementation, and then evaluation. When you plan it quite well, uh, you ensure uh, you will have minimal disruptions and the transition to the new, uh, it could be new technology, new systems, whatever it could be, that transition could actually be small. So the key things throughout the whole process that you really need to take in note of, one is that understand the stakeholders involved and how you really need to handle the different stakeholders. Okay, so you need to have the skills of stakeholder analysis, stakeholder management. And then you need to have uh, the ability to, to plan communication. Uh, or you need to have the communication plan in place for the different stakeholders or the different staff members who could actually be interested uh, in the activity that is being implemented. And then uh, for the new staff, they need to be, um, for the staff, they, they have to be trained uh, on the new term, uh, technology or the new systems or processes that are actually uh, very, very key. Uh, so just a, minute, a moment. Uh, just a brief moment here. All right, so the, the, uh, the change has to be well planned such that you don't have uh, disruptions, uh, such that really people understand what you, uh, what you want them to do or what you want them to, to implement. This is very, very key. Uh, so I have reached an extent of explaining to you that you really need to understand who would be the people that actually have interest in the chain that you you are you want to institute, and therefore you need to do what you call stakeholder analysis, and then you need to have a communication plan, and then train the staff on the new uh, the, the new it could be a new system, it could be a new procedure, whatever it is, you need to train and actually develop their competencies, and then you evaluate and see uh, whether. That the change that you have instituted has actually given you positive uh, results or uh, you need to make more changes to make sure that you have positive results. So usually uh, instituting changes in an organization is not very easy. And when it comes to the healthcare setting, it could be more difficult. Why? Because one, you deal, you're dealing with professionals who are, who are coming from diverse fields. Uh, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have midwives, clinic officers, and the rest. Uh, handling such a diverse group of, uh, of people is actually quite challenging and difficult. So you have people who be resistant to change. Uh, then uh, that is a challenge that you need to navigate as a healthcare manager. Uh, but also the other issue is that if you don't communicate properly, and that is why we emphasize the key, the word planned communication, you need to, to think about the communication plan uh, in advance. How are you going to release out information? Uh, that is very key. Communication 
uh, allows you to be very transparent. Okay, uh, if you don't communicate um, appropriately in a timely way, then uh, uh, you're creating aspects of doubt. So people will not will not actually trust what you're saying. So to be uh, to be trusted, uh, you need to be very transparent, and then you can remove any doubts associated with whatever change that you are actually instituting. Uh, sometimes you want to institute a change, but you don't have enough resources or equipment uh, to be able to manage uh, or to be able to implement that change. And then uh, we have what you call organizational cultures. These are norms, these are beliefs that members of a given organization have. Okay, uh, so these organizational cultures can actually prevent you from instituting you know, changes within an organization. But of course, you can have a lot of other uh, challenges that you can face. Sometimes uh, the, the, the people that you want to change do not have adequate training, okay? They have, they have, not, they, 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 they have not been trained in what they need to do, okay? They, they are, even their moral, their moral or their level of motivation. So these are other things that could actually uh, make change management very, very difficult. So you... You need to address these challenges uh, through different uh, uh, mechanisms. One is make sure that you engage the stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders are people who have interest in what you're trying to, uh, to put across. Um, so you need to engage them uh, and also uh, be open with them, communicate, have it, uh, an open open communication strategy. This is very, very, very key. Uh, so your, your communication should be clear and very transparent. Make sure that you have adequate resources. The staff need to be trained on whatever change that you want to institute. Look at the issues to do with culture and then address them. Usually, um, you need to do an assessment and understand the whole organization uh, in terms of its culture. And then from there, you can now be able to see the cultural barriers and then address them uh, uh, logically. <clears throat> so why do people actually fear uh, to change? Uh, so for example, if you have been using the, uh, a digital blood pressure machine, but now you're saying uh, the digital blood pressure machine sometimes has, uh, it, it can lead to errors. So you encourage, or you, you want to make sure that the nurses uh, can take the blood pressure using the manual blood pressure machine. So that is a change that you have. Uh, that, that is a change, it's a, it's a transition that you're creating, moving away from the digital, uh, blood pressure machine. It's raining here. I don't know if you can hear me loud and clear. Can you confirm that? Yeah, it's loud and clear. All right, fine. Yeah, so so you're, you're creating that kind of uh, uh, of change. Um, but you can have people who actually could interpret that as uh, a way to frustrate them out of their jobs, okay? You could have people like the, the nurse aides who may not really have the competence in, uh, in taking blood pressure using the manual blood pressure machine. They, they could actually cause resistance towards that change. So sometimes people actually cause a change because they think that, uh, that change may result in them losing their jobs, or actually they don't really know the consequence of that change. Uh, and, and also people don't want to lose control over how they do their things. But this is actually very common in, uh, 
in government uh, government institutions you realize that uh, they don't want to do things in a technological way partly because one they don't know that they can't use the technology but they think if they don't use the the way that they have they have been used to then they're not actually doing what they lose control individuals will always want to have control over how they do their work so that is very very important but some others are very skeptical about the new change that is actually being created. So it, it becomes quite difficult. So you need to overcome this, this, uh, this resistance. One, I keep saying that you need to be very open, communicate and engage them. Listen to their concerns and address them. Provide them training that they need. Let you demonstrate the importance of the new change that you are, you are instituting and then provide them with all the resources that they need to be able to implement the new change that you are implementing. Communication plan is very key because it increases engagement, it increases trust, increases transparency, increases awareness, and also it, you can use it to address any issues that, they, that may arise during the change process. Make sure that you communicate to people uh, messages that they can understand. This is what we mean by tailoring the messages. Okay, tailor the messages to the audience that you're writing to. If they're health professionals, if they are support staff, you need to make sure that uh, you communicate with them in the language that is very clear. Clarity, consistency, transparency, these are very important. It is also very key that communication is done in two ways. There is, you communicate back and forth, okay? Back and forth, uh, such that they can actually be able to, uh, to follow up with any previous. There is follow up in messages that you exchange um, the different people. You can still use technology in instituting change management. Okay, uh, this is very important because it one it improves communication, but also improves coordination. And then the other aspect, which is very very key in the in healthcare industry in this generation, is what we call data analytics. You use data to 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 convince people or to make people understand the importance of certain changes within a healthcare organization. So we, we now use what we call data-driven healthcare decision-making. You don't make decisions from the blue, but you use data to be able to make those decisions. So you can still use uh, technology in change management. What are the different models that you can use in change management? The most common one is by part leveling. This... Um, <clears throat> This management model has three stages. It recognizes that it recognizes that uh, change happens in three stages. The first stage being the unfreezing, which is basically letting people know about the need for a change. And therefore you want to change the status quo. You want to change it. You want to change the way things are done. So you communicate to them about the fact that there is a need to have the processes or the procedures changed. When you do that, you are freezing. Okay? And then the next step is now implementing the, the change. This is what we call moving. During this process, people may resist the change that you want to implement, but you need to be able to address this resistance. And you also need to provide the necessary support, training, resources, everything that is needed to make sure that the, 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 the change is actually uh, implemented. Then the next or the last stage is what we call the refreezing. This is when now the, the change has been instituted, but you want to make sure that 
people have actually fully adopted the new change. This is about stabilizing or reinforcing the new procedure, behavior that you really want. So that it becomes part of the organizational culture. And then we have another model, which is the quarters eight step, uh, eight step change model. With this model, there are eight steps, okay? And that for you to, 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 to make sure that change happens within an organization, you, need, you can go through all these eight steps. First step is that you need to create a sense of urgency. Communicate to people they need to have a change. So that people start to feel it within themselves that actually there is a need to, for us to change how we do things. That is one. Two is that form a powerful coalition. This means that you need to, you need to get a group of people together who will champion the change. So you need to have that team who we can call the, the, the change champions. This, this, this team will consist of people who are passionate about the change that you want to create, but they are also aware of everything that is associated with the change and that you do actually gain enough support from the key stakeholders uh, in uh, <clears throat> the key stakeholders in the healthcare industry. And then we move to the next one, which is basically, uh, to, you need to create a vision. You need to show people where you want them to, to be, or where, if the chain has been instituted, where the organization will be after instituting that change. That is very, very, very key. So create that vision, and then communicate that, that vision, okay? Then the next step now, empower people to act. This is when now you either train them, you make sure that they have the competences to act. You, you basically even delegate to some of the authorities to them, such that they can be able to be, uh, to, they can be able to, to implement the change that you actually want. It is very important to register the first wins. This is to say that, the first steps are very important and they need to be recognized. So you need to generate those first wins. We are calling them here, generate what we call the short-term wins. For every, for every step that they make, it, it, it lays the foundation for the next bigger step. That is very, very important. And then now, step number seven is that you need to consolidate the gains. Build on the sort successes that you have to build to, to build a foundation for the long-term gains that you will have. And then the last step is now to integrate the changes into the organization of culture. This such that it becomes a new norm that has been accepted by the uh, by the staff. So as a healthcare manager, you need to understand who are the people who are actually going to be involved in the change that you are going to institute. You need to have what you call state, uh, change, change sponsors, change agents, change champions, and the impacted stakeholders. The change, the, the change champions, or the, the, let us start with the change uh, sponsors. This, this can be a senior leader who is accountable for the change initiative. The person who wants to make sure that that change happens is the one we are calling the change leader. Just a minute, let me take this call. Um, let me pause this. So you need to know who's, uh, who's accountable for the change that you want to be instituted. The, the individual who is responsible for driving the change is what you call the change agent and then the change the change champions are those who will promote and support the change within their different departments uh, or teams. And then the different stakeholders who may be uh, impacted by the change that has been instituted. So you need to have a team. 
Uh, that team can consist of the change manager, the change analyst, and then the training coordinator, depending on the kind of, uh, of change that you want to institute. Some changes, you don't need, really need to have a complex team. Some changes are, are very easy to institute, but others may be very complex. So you may need a, a very diverse team that has the, <clears throat> the expertise to be able to, uh, to deliver, to make sure that the change actually happens. So you need to have the expertise and then also provide the necessary training for, for the team members such that uh, the change can be very effective. You need also to have leaders. Leaders are those who can provide direction and inspire others and then make sure that the change initiative is actually implemented. So that is also very, very important. The leaders should be visionary, empathetic, resilient, and also should possess communication skills. These are very, very important. Because sometimes they start, they don't really see the, the long-term benefits of certain changes. So you as the leader or as a change agent, you need to be able to provide that vision, communicate it to them so that they can really understand it. But also if they feel they, they, they face any challenges, you should be empathetic to them, but make sure that you can be able to push them so that the change can be instituted. And that is related to resilience. And then you should have the appropriate communication skills to be able to achieve what you want. Leaders can be trained, mentored, and modeled. Okay, so the health organizations should have training programs, which you can call leadership mentorship programs or leadership development programs in order to train and mentor uh, leaders in the industry. <clears throat> You can carry out what we call the change impact assessment. This is basically about evaluating the potential effects of a change in the different sectors of the an organization or different aspects of the organization. Okay. Sometimes you can institute a change, but you, you don't really see, uh, you may not really see what impact it will have on the different departments. So you need to carry out what you call the change impact and assessment. To, uh, to really understand the kind of uh, effects that the change will have. You look at process mapping, risk analysis, and stakeholder analysis uh, consultation as ways of understanding the impact of the change that has been created. If you, if you conduct an, a change impact assessment, you're going to minimize disruption, okay? Uh, you're going to make sure that the patients actually at the center of the care. This is to make sure that they are also consulted um, on any changes that may be implemented. And therefore you'll have optimal patient outcomes in the settings of healthcare. <clears throat> so how do you implement these changes? You can roll out changes at once. This is what we call the big bang approach. You roll, all, you roll out all the changes at once. You say, Starting from today, we are going to change this, change that, 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 and that. But you can also decide to say, okay, this week we are focusing on that, on this, and then next week we shall focus on that, and then the other week, just like that, in a phased way. Um, how you choose to, 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 to implement certain changes depends on what you think is actually appropriate. Uh, depending on the complexity of the change that you have and the context and other, other things that uh, can influence uh, successful implementation of a change in a healthcare organization. Training is very important uh, for all the staff who are involved in adapting the new change. It addresses any needs that may arise. Sometimes they need technical, uh, technical knowledge on how to, to, to use technologies, if they are technologies, or um, if they are clinical skills, they need to be trained and things like that. So that is also very, very important. You need to make sure that you evaluate the change um, that you have instituted. So that means that at the start of the project or the, or the, the start of the change initiative, you need to have what you call baseline data 
uh, that you can use to measure success at the end of the implementation uh, of the change initiative. Uh, so you can use different strategies of collecting this data. Uh, they can be surveys, uh, questionnaires. Uh, you can use data analytics to, to arrive at that. So you can use uh, <clears throat> what we call key performance indicators and metrics. You, the organization may have certain targets that they want to really achieve. So uh, you can use those as benchmarks uh, for, for evaluating the, the change that has happened. So you, you can carry out a pre-change pre or pre-implementation uh, review and then the post uh, review. So you look at what happens before and what happens after. What has changed? What have you learned? And then uh, you can adjust accordingly. This data is used for you to make sure that you ad make adjustments such that you actually improve the systems and, and the strategies to achieve better results. <clears throat> you can use a number of resources to institute a change. Uh, you, can, you can use software programs. Uh, they can be project management programs. They can be collaborative platforms and many others uh, that you can use. So you can use software for computer programs. Uh, in instituting a change uh, within an organization. Making sure that people really adopt the behavior and they incorporate it into what you call the conventional culture is very, very important. So to, to have that, you need to make sure that the, the change is aligned with the values and the missions of the, and the mission of the organization. Make sure that the change is actually reflected in the policies, procedures, and performance management and also that you, pro, you continuously reinforce and train people about the change that has been instituted. Okay, continuously use data. Uh, to, people want to, want to implement a change if they see the need for it. So data can actually provide a very good resource to make sure that you can actually uh, uh, make sure that people are actually aligned uh, to what you actually need. So you need to recognize uh, successes that have really been registered and that from the one go, you involve, you involve the employees such that they can take ownership and accountability of the change that has been instituted. Sometimes cultures can be a, a, a barrier, but you need to then make sure that you will you engage the employees, uh, train them, uh, make sure that, that you exhibit what you call inclusive leadership and uh, leverage diversity to enhance innovation and resilience within the organization. Make sure that uh, people don't, don't, don't feel marginalized. They, they, they need to feel like their views are actually, they are heard and they're actually listened to. That is very, very important. Changes can happen when organizations meet, uh, I mean, few, I mean, uh, integrate, what we call mergers. Uh, um, <clears throat> when, when two healthcare organizations uh, come together and work as one entity, that's what we call mergers. When these actually happen, there's a lot of uncertainty, okay? In terms of processes, in terms of, uh, employee stability, they are very, very uncertain. What is very important during such situations is that you maintain clear communication, the stakeholders are well in, um, engaged, and that there is cultural integration. That is very, very key. Agile, uh, <clears throat> Agile change management is also a very important approach in, in managing change. You need to make sure that uh, you use a flexible approach. You continuously learn the system and, and then improve it. So it involves flexibility, collaboration, and continuous improvement. These are very key aspects. So for you to be able to achieve that, you need to be able to be a person who understands uh, what, what, what stage is the change at, and then be able to uh, to learn from it, okay? Uh, make sure that 
you you are very responsive and open to any changes and feedback that comes from stakeholders. Collaborate with the with the key stakeholders and continuously improve. And that is basically not about uh, what agile change management is. Learn, respond, adjust, talk to people, engage them. That's very important. Start with the, what you call pilot projects. Don't go wholesale. Start small. Re receive feedback. Analyze it. Readjust the system. And then move forward. Those are very important steps. Make sure that people understand the vision and goals uh, in the desired change that you want to get. Start slowly. Break down the changes into smaller manageable uh, parts. And then execute them. Get feedback, add against, start again. That's very, very key. So you can use a number of tools. Uh, we have the Kanban board. Uh, you, you can, <clears throat> with this, you can actually schedule tasks and see how they are progressing. That's an important tool. It's a computer tool that you can use. Uh, you can meet people every day and have short meetings see where they face challenges, and then adjust. Reflect, sit down, and see how a particular change initiative is actually progressing. What lessons do you learn? How do you make it better? That's very important. Listen to people's stories. They will tell you a lot about the, the, the change initiative and how you can, you can actually in, improve it. <clears throat> Train people. This, we have mentioned this over and over again. It's very important that you train people and they gain the competences that are actually uh, needed. <clears throat> Make sure that you don't forget the patient is at the center of any change that happens within a healthcare and uh, within a healthcare organization. Involve them. Get their feedback, communicate with them. <clears throat> I want to end here. <clears throat> I hope you have any questions? We are going to end in a few minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Director, for this brilliant presentation.